Today, the latest weapons, coupled with the fighting skill of the American soldier, stand ready, on the alert all over the world, to defend this country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture, an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. The privilege of serving the United States in uniform is no longer limited to men. To prepare the women who will serve with our regular army, the Women's Army Corps recently opened a multi-million dollar training center at Fort McClellan, Alabama, the WAC's first real home of their own. Today's big picture offers the first good look at this new college for WAC officers and enlisted women. Since 1942, when the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps was created, women training for service with the U.S. Army have had a number of temporary homes ranging from Florida to Massachusetts, from Iowa to Virginia. Today, the permanent WAC center is a cluster of 22 cream-colored buildings in a natural setting of pines, oaks, and sweet gum trees at Alabama's Fort McClellan. On hand for the dedication ceremonies are servicemen and women who can easily recall when the training of wax was an emergency, sometimes haphazard job. So without further ado, I would like to present to you our Chief of Staff, the United States Army, General Matthew B. Ridgway. General Ridgway. Today's ceremony has special significance, not alone for the Women's Army Corps, but for all of us. It emphasized the essential need for women in the Army and the continuing nature of that need. The task of keeping our nation strong and free requires the efforts and talents of all our citizens, men and women alike. For despite all our great natural resources and our industrial and military capabilities, one of our nation's greatest shortages is in personnel, <coughs> in the men and women who produce our industrial products and those who make up our armed services. Despite all our achievements in the field of national defense, men and women and the principles for which they stand are still our most precious possession and our most priceless resource. <coughs> I take great pleasure now in unveiling this plaque, which later will be placed in a permanent location to commemorate this auspicious occasion. And again, I want to acknowledge my sense of privilege in being permitted to participate here with you today. train, bus, or airplane to Anniston, Alabama come new WAC enlistees from every corner of the country. For the recruits, there lies ahead an eight weeks basic training course, a curriculum designed to give every girl a chance at an interesting and attractive army job or a head start on a post-WAC career. From the moment when the recruit first takes the oath of enlistment, her trip from hometown to training center is carefully prepared. At the Anniston station, military buses are waiting to complete the last five-mile leg to Fort McClellan. Enlistment standards of the Women's Army Corps are high. In addition to the usual age, citizenship, and physical requirements, to be accepted, the recruit must be of excellent character and have a high school education or the equivalent. To anyone who has served in one or another of the U.S. service branches, the issuing of uniforms and military gear to the recruits follows a familiar pattern. But in the Women's Army Corps, there's a marked distinction. Hat, uniform, and accessories worn by the wax, all are styled by high fashion designer Hattie Carnegie. The value placed by the Women's Army Corps on meticulous grooming and feminine grace is one of the first lessons learned by the recruit. The acquiring of good habits of dress is rewarding both in civilian life and in service.
Perhaps the trainee's strongest reminder that she has entered the United States Army comes with the issuance of the practical, everyday shoes, which, scientifically designed for maximum comfort, are exactingly fitted. The ancient jokes about growing into a uniform or reducing to fit it do not hold up in the wax. Each uniform is custom tailored to ensure every recruit a uniform which meets her individual requirements. Once the clothing issue is complete and has been double checked by the supply sergeant, each recruit is personally responsible for the care and maintenance of every item. Inoculating shots are the first health precautions taken in the trainee's behalf. From now until her period of service is over, each WAC will enjoy free, complete medical and dental care. Before she begins basic, the trainee is interviewed by a specialist about her particular interests and skills. The wide variety of careers possible is explained in detail. Each trainee names three choices for a specialist school. On the basis of such interviews and previous tests, her future job is pinpointed and her course of study determined. For trainee and post personnel alike, the average day gets off to an early start. For some girls, the transition from civilian to military life takes a little time, particularly the time when the call of reveille should be rousing her from bed. The center's mission is threefold. As well as giving basic training to all WAC recruits, it retains from the ranks many women who will go on to specialist schools. Here also are developed commissioned and non-commissioned officers. Reveille and the morning roll call are fundamental to all military training. At the WAC center, they are an integral part of the Army's large design, which seeks to utilize women in an ever-widening variety of non-combat jobs, contributing directly to the nation's defense. The morning march out to the WAC band and the review by non-commissioned officers for company marching honors are standard features of basic training. Primarily, drill training is aimed at improving the trainee's poise, posture, and military bearing. More familiar with a dance floor than a drill ground, a few trainees invariably find that they have what behave like two left feet. However, in a surprisingly short time, commands to the left, right, and rear become familiar sounds, and the response to command becomes automatic. In the first few weeks of basic training, no military practice is more frequent than inspection. At the start, the demand for neatness is laid down, then emphasized continually thereafter, with the result that great pride in personal appearance becomes second nature. No area of human relations is overlooked in the training program. In class, social concepts are studied and discussed. This is our first hour of individual standards and social concepts. In this hour, we are going to discuss you. You as representative of the Women's Army Corps. Does anyone know the meaning of individual standards and social concepts? Individual standards are the standards that a person sets up for herself, and social concepts are the standards that have been passed down through the centuries. The course is well-rounded ranging from individual character guidance to practical studies in group living. 
Wax enrolled in the center's clerk, typist, and stenography course find the program radically different from the accepted training class. Students are graduated when they have attained the proficiency necessary for assignment. They are not required to attend the maximum limit of the course. Enrollment in these classes is open both to wax in the field and to graduates of basic training. The value of the course is twofold. The Army needs good clerk typists and stenographers for important and interesting positions for post and higher level jobs at home and overseas. The increased skill and ability enjoyed by the graduates brings more rapid promotions with a corresponding increase in pay. Then too, the new skills may be put to use to greater advantage should the WAC later decide to return to civilian life. The WAC school might be compared to a secretarial school, which requires no tuition fee and which pays the students to learn new skills. Moreover, each student receives individual as well as class instruction to aid her progress. The school day is anything but a grind. Conveniently located near the classrooms, lounges provide relaxation between classes. Two years of planning before the first groundbreaking at the WAC Center ensured that the school would achieve the optimum in comfort and attractiveness. Wax between the ages of 21 and 28 who have passed the required entrance examinations and interviews may be admitted to the center's officer candidate school. The 17 weeks course combines purely academic studies with military subjects. Young women with college educations are given the opportunity to begin military careers as commissioned officers. Because the Women's Army Corps has no ROTC, the demand for officer personnel must be met by training women of qualified caliber in the center's OCS. Similar to the advanced training offered by other branches of the Army, the center also conducts an advanced officer course to prepare WAX for staff duty at higher headquarters in the Army and Department of Defense. Students for the 20-week course come from the ranks of captains and majors. Supplementing the classroom studies in tactics and procedures are field trips to various military centers. Outstanding military and civilian leaders are frequently guest lecturers. Nearly every modern convenience conceivable is incorporated in the facilities of the WAC Center. But the centuries-old institution of KP still exists, and will undoubtedly, until civilians and military alike have learned to subsist on little pills alone. But the burden of KP is reduced to a minimum by distributing the duty evenly among all WACs. Well-balanced meals prepared by expert cooks and dietitians are served promptly and attractively by specially trained WAC personnel. Healthy appetites among the trainees are assured by proper amounts of physical and mental exercise. One form of exercise, sometimes called drudgery or wash day blues by housewives, which has been cut to a minimum at the center, is the WAC laundry problem. Every dormitory boasts its own laundromat and ironing facilities. No scrubbing, no rubbing. They let the machines do it. Once the clothes have been washed to a quality frequently called sunshine bright, miles of clothesline await in the warm Alabama sun. On the chance that over-mechanization, as exemplified by the automatic laundry, could lead to a weakening of physical trim, Trainees attend frequent calisthenic classes. The Post's 18-hole golf course is only one of several superb recreational facilities available to the WACs during their off-duty hours. And you needn't be an experienced golfer to give the course a try. The first attempt to circumnavigate the course might take some little time, but with diligence, with repeated practice, gradually one's prowess grows until at last some degree of success is achieved. For those less athletically inclined, 
The spacious day rooms found in each dormitory offer many recreational opportunities for the WAC's ample free hours. In many respects, the living quarters bear a closer resemblance to college dormitories or to sorority houses than to military barracks. The jukebox and television set in every day room are close reminders of home. And the frequent exchange of letters between trainees and their families keep strong the hometown ties. The gulf between the military and civilian world is narrowed further at the Post Exchange, which stocks a wide variety of clothing and accessories. Beyond any question, the most popular spot at the new center is the WAC Beauty Shop. Professional beauticians modify and restyle the wax hairdo in accordance with the prevailing fashions. Beauty treatment available is complete from hair to fingertips. Intense though the training courses are at the center, teachers and students alike have adequate spare time to practice the hobbies they bring with them or to develop new interests on their own. In designing the living quarters at the center, collaborating architects and military authorities aimed at providing a maximum of personal privacy with the utmost in modern conveniences and comfort. A girl is as free to add small decorative touches to her quarters as she is to indulge in her favorite pastimes in off-duty hours, whether painting or music arranging. Perhaps for the 14th Army Band. The 14th is the only WAC band in existence today. The title of the WAC March by Jane Douglas tells its own story. A WAC is a soldier too. woman who plays a band instrument is auditioned during her basic training by the director of the WAC band. Those accepted are assigned to the band and play at all special and regular military functions, such as the time-honored call of retreat. Present arms!
every opportunity for a rich spiritual life is offered wax at the center. Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish services are conducted regularly in the many chapels of the post under the direction of army chaplains. The chaplains are always available for counsel and guidance. Many wax stationed at the center find here the opportunity to strengthen the religious ties of their particular faith by joining a choir or teaching in one of the many Sunday school classes. The first weeks in basic training are crowded, but at the end of the fifth week, the trainee receives an eight-hour pass. Based upon her merit, she may receive six or ten-hour passes the other weekends in basic. Located, as it is, on the grounds of Fort McClellan, there is never a shortage of masculine escorts at the WAC Center. Quite the contrary is true. Each week, the WAC Service Club becomes the center of social life. Tonight, the various movie houses, the swimming pool, and even the libraries take second place to the dance, music for which is provided by members from the WAC military band. Following the dance, a late snack in one of the two cheerful kitchens which are features of every barracks gives an opportunity to discuss the strong or weak points of the escort of the evening. Marriage is not encouraged during basic training, but if a trainee does decide to marry, that too can be arranged. The only requirement is that the WAC complete one year in service before resigning. Marriage will always lead all other careers for women, and the WAC graduate will be a better wife, mother, and citizen, thanks to her training and education during her life in the Women's Army Corps.
Eight weeks of training will not make polished soldiers of girls straight from high school, college, or farm, but the new WAC Center, whose facilities and program are designed expressly for women, today produces women in uniform, educated and prepared for duty to a degree never before possible. The Women's Army Corps, 12 years after forming, now has an up-to-date home of its own. A score of jobs at home and abroad are today open to qualified wax, for undeniable proof has been furnished by experience that women can perform many non-combat jobs as well as, and in some cases, better than men. The United States Army has called upon the woman power of the country to strengthen our defensive might at its very foundation. There is no doubt that women today are playing an increasingly important role in our nation's defense. And thanks to the modern WAC training center, graduates are better trained and better qualified for more responsible jobs than ever before. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen inviting you to be with us again next week when we'll present another look at the big picture. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the U.S. Army in cooperation with this station. You can be an important part of the Big Picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.